stands for small angle x-ray scattering and it is a useful technique for proteins that are hard to crystallize either because they like to associate with lipids or they have disordered segments and um, or they, you just don't have any luck crystallizing them. Uh, this is a great technique to get uh, the shape, the overall shape of the protein or some other macromolecule. You can distinguish between disordered and ordered proteins. Uh, you can tell if your sample is homogeneous or not and you will get an overall shape of the protein or a molecular envelope that has low resolution. And also parameters like maximum distance in the particle and radius of gyration, which is the average of all the distances from the center of the protein to um, other places in the molecule, average all of those distances, uh, interatomic distances, you will get the RG or radius of gyration. To do SACs, you also don't need to have your protein in a crystal form. You need it to be in solution, which is much easier, but it has to be in a high concentration. The optimum concentration depends on the size of the protein. If it's a bigger protein, you can get away with a small, lesser concentration. But if it's a small protein, you might need a higher concentration. And the range is between 1 to 10 mg per mil. And usually 5 mg per mil is the works based on my experience. And a typical volume that you need is about 30 microliters. But if you're doing it in-house, have a little bit more uh, sample prepared just in case you might lose a bit. So first you want to load your buffer in the sample holder. Um, so the sample ho holder has um, three metal parts and two o-rings. You want to remember how it was assembled. So I have the picture in this video and you can refer to it once you want to load. Then slowly um, pipe that in your sample into the capillary that's in the middle of the metal part and then you want to slowly put the cap on both sides and slowly twist each side just by a little bit and do it in a symmetrical way because if you overdo only one side the sample will just come out from the other end so this is um i guess the hardest part when it comes to loading the sample and make sure there are absolutely no bubbles because that would um, introduce artifacts into uh, your spectra. Then you um, put the sample holder in and when you do that you have to make sure the notch aligns. Um, there is only one correct way to do it. And you can see it here. Then close the door. And you want to create a vacuum inside. So first you close this little thing and then you press the button that will pump out air outside of the, the box where your sample is in it. Then um, this is because you don't want air molecules to be on the way of the x-ray beam. Then before anything we have to do um, beam stop alignment and select line collimation. So most of the in-house uh, sax instruments will have line collimation but the ones at uh, other beams they are point collimation. So with line collimation uh, in the processing we also do something called de-smearing and I will talk about that later in detail. So you follow these, um, whatever I'm doing here, you first do uh, alignment for high intensity setting and then a high resolution setting 
put the absorption at none, the acquisition time at two. Then you play with the beam stop height until the secondary beam is about a third of the primary one. And once you do that, you select OK and go ahead and do exactly the same thing for the high resolution setting. So this is how it should look in the end. The secondary beam should be about a third as high. Then here I'm repeating the same thing. Absorbance at none, the acquisition time at 2 seconds, and um, the, the adjustment was about a third. Then finally, uh, you want to do this step where um, you search for the primary beam, and yeah, that's about it for the beam stop alignment. And every time you do an alignment, it is good about it is good for two days. So you can do um, a lot of measurements in that time, but after two days, it's not really reliable and you should do another alignment again. So now I can finally um, tell the software where I want to save my file and what it will be called. So I can start um, acquiring uh, data from my buffer. Then here we have a sample detector distance value. I put 500 and it goes to the 317 point uh, something, which is what it should be, but because I can't remember that number, I put 500. Everything else, height and roll is zero, absorber none, being stopped by intensity setting. And then at this point, I'm gonna do a test uh, measurement so I'm going to put the time that I want for the test run, um, something small like 5 minutes. Then I'm going to uh, control the temperature. Now open the shutter so the x-ray will actually go through the box where my sample is in it. And once I do that, I can finally do a test run. And when you open the uh, shutter, you see a red, the red light come on. So the measurement was looking okay. Now I put the values that I want for my actual run, which is 30 minutes per frame and a total of 48 frames. So that would be 24 hours, which is long, but uh, this works for my sample because otherwise the data would be too noisy. But if you have a high signal to noise, you can do um, much lower times, like two hours. After I'm done, I select the door icon, so this is the only way it will save it. If you close the software, it wouldn't save it. Then I undo the vacuum and take out my sample. So doing everything in reverse. And yeah, always make sure you don't actually touch the capillary itself, which is in the center. And then, yeah, I do the same thing for my sample and I ran that after you run both buffer and sample you want to go to the sax treat software and yeah you go there do it for both you do a correct all and save so that's simple and you just do this for the buffer and sample so you have a file created I think it's a pdh file for both then you open Sax Quant software, go to 1D operations, and unless you're the first person that is doing this, um, somebody should have a processing file from before. So it's easier to open something from the past, and then you, you will delete the sample information and the buffer and everything that they um, loaded. So remove data from that file. And then you add the data from what you just acquired. So your sample um, file and your buffer file. And these should be a PDH file. And then you also add a beam profile for one of them. So I did that for both. And you can see them plotted together, the buffer is a flat line and the sample is it's higher so this is 
um, how it should look like and I also select which file is the beam profile because the software should know that and you tell it which one is the sample and which one is the buffer so now I'm just doing that telling it which is which and once you do that um, when you do the subtraction uh, it also calculates it for you so it subtr subtracts the buffer from the sample and the black line, um, the black profile that you see is the subtraction. And you can also do a pro subtraction that should be in there and desmearing, which is crucial for line collimation. So this red uh, spectra is the desmeared one. This is the one that is uh, you need for anything else. This is the useful data. And then you save that as a .dat file because uh, all the processing um, softwares after that use a .dat file. So save the .dat file onto your USB and you're ready to go for further processing. After you're done, you want to turn off the X-ray generator. So um, and you will see the light has gone off thank you so much for watching the video um, i will make a new video on how to analyze the data and how to interpret it thank you and bye